Spider-Man, Batman, Superman. The standard pantheon of comic book characters, easily considered the top of the food chain by readers the world over, ourselves included. Still, Marvel and DC don't have a stranglehold on the comic book industry, and while those aforementioned characters may be at the top of the superhero genre, there are still plenty of others worth discussing. From longevity to recognizability to mass appeal, plenty of other characters are worthy of the title of the greatest of all time. Grab a drink and join us as we continue our discussion on who is the GOAT of comic book characters, this time looking specifically at non-Marvel and non-DC characters. Welcome to Coffee with Nerds. All right. Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to another episode of the Coffee with Nerds podcast. I'm your host, Ryan Lecknoise. With me, as always, is my good friend and co-host, Alex. How are you today? I'm doing good. How are you? Not too bad. So recently-ish, I guess, we talked about who we thought could be the greatest superhero, the greatest comic book character of all time. And within that conversation, even when we got to the point of talking about the Mount Rushmore of superheroes or comic book characters, the entire list was, of course, Marvel and DC characters, which is to be expected, right? Well, I do think that one was specifically superheroes too, which does limit it more. Which does limit it more. But even if we weren't looking at that, it's, it's still probably looking at Marvel and DC for obvious reasons, right? Like they've dominated the market. Yeah. Yeah, it's to be expected that they would dominate the market. When we talked about our top four, I think we ended up getting Batman, Superman, Spider-Man, and Wonder Woman, something like that. There was a few others that we brought up, but obviously they're dominating. Now, the thing with comic books is there's way more than just Marvel and DC. Yeah. And a lot of these other characters, a lot of these other writers, a lot of these other superheroes or non-superheroes or whatever you want to call them, they get heavily overlooked because of the success of Marvel and DC. Yep. And they're definitely worth discussing and talking about. So I thought today we could kind of have our discussion. Let's keep it very loose in this one, but just who might be the GOAT or the greatest of all time non-Marvel or DC comic book character. And then maybe we can flush out a Mount Rushmore or like yeah. a, a basketball team or something of of who are the other next greatest superheroes that don't fall under the two major bandwagons? Comic characters, not superheroes. Yes, we're going to just make it all comic straight up because there are there's Well, again, way we more. go just superheroes. We're just putting ourselves in that limit again. Well, if we're going superheroes, there's pretty much like Invincible and that's about it. I mean, Spawn. Spawn. Hellboy. Well, would you consider Spawn and Hellboy superheroes though? I mean, Hellboy, definitely. Why? I haven't really read Spawn, so I don't really know. They're but... both not really superheroes. Like that's They're the thing. Heroes. The definition becomes very limited, yeah. but I mean... We're just going to go comic book characters in general. The last one, even though it was superheroes, it was still pretty much just comic books. Because we even had the Joker was in a discussion for that one too. Yeah, that's true actually. Like it was just superheroes it's just or comic book characters. It just happens that obviously those ones are the, the biggest ones. Well, I think outside of Marvel and DC though, you get a lot of other big names that aren't superheroes. Yes, because there's a lot more freedom and creativity thanks to companies like Image, which has just given a publishing platform to a lot of independent writers and independent works, which has created for a lot of unique stories. So I will say, I just, it, like, while you were talking about that, it, one, like, a really left field choice just occurred to me that I actually think probably should be on, like, the Mount Rushmore. Okay, so then why don't you start with that one and we'll lead off the discussion there. So the real left field one that I probably, I don't know why it just suddenly occurred to me, Archie from Archie Comics, though. Yeah, Archie was one for certain that I wanted to bring up. Absolutely. That is one of the most dominant comics out there in terms of how long it's existed. It's always been in print. There's, you know, it's just, it's a very different audience than I think most comic books. Yeah. It's been around for since what, like the 60s? I want to say. Something like that. A long time. Yeah, and like, they're still making them. They have the Riverdale show. There's. They had Archie's Weird Mysteries before that. Yeah, there's an. Indian show actually called Archie's that's based on Archie comics like so yeah I mean he's definitely someone that's extremely popular he's crossed over with all kinds of things there's like Archie meets the Punisher Archie meets Kiss yep it's a massive franchise like there was a period of time where they had two separate universes going Yep. One where he ended up with Betty and one where he ended up with Veronica. Well, oh, because that was the huge point of contention between yeah. the readers, right? As some people were Veronica fans, other were Betty fans. So it's like, well, let's just make two stories yeah. then. They had the the zombie comic. Like, that's one that's done extremely, extremely well. I don't know much about it. I feel like I've probably read a couple because my sister actually had a lot when I was a little kid. Yeah, I've read some. So they're very slice of life, which is fine. There's not a lot of slice of life in comics. So having those is good. Yeah. It's just the adventures of essentially 
actually a popular high school kids. Yeah. I couldn't remember. I couldn't remember if he was supposed to be popular. I knew it was the idea was like Reggie was supposed to be the, the popular guy, I thought. For sure. But Archie was like always well liked, always respected. Yeah. But I felt like him and Jughead were supposed to be like the less popular kids. But I don't know. Again, I, I don't really remember Archie very well. I, again, I'm sure I read some as a little kid but I don't remember any actual stories. No, Archie's always been, he's he's painted as like the well-liked human being yeah. of yeah, Riverdale. Like, he's not like the nerdy kid or the weird kid. He's more average kid, I think, was what I thought. I mean, I wouldn't say he's average. Not in the Riverdale show, but I feel like in the comics. Definitely not in the Riverdale. No, in the, in the comics too. I don't want to think too much. I'm also thinking more early comics. I know the later stuff, like I, he got much more successful. Yeah, like he he could have been in the discussion for the Mount Rushmore in general, but I think his big thing is longevity. Yeah. I don't think like if we compare those those metrics we measured them by, I don't think he reaches any of them except for maybe like iconicness. Everyone knows who Archie is. Even if people haven't read the comics, you know who Archie is. That being said, they're definitely not nearly as financially successful as like a Spider-Man bat. No, not like them. But I mean, it's probably pretty financially successful just because again, it's always been being made. I think it's consistent. Yeah. But, but I'm saying it must be profitable. What was the big, what was the last big Archie movie? I mean, there was never a movie. Exactly. Which means you're missing out on millions upon millions. But I mean, there is the Riverdale show that is pretty successful. It's a bad show, though. I don't know. I watched like half the first season and was like, I have no interest in this. And apparently they have superpowers now. Yeah, it's really bad. I watched the first bit and I'm like, this is just... yeah. I've heard in one of the newer seasons they get superpowers, which is crazy. They went hard into like CW teen drama, but it's like, ugh. They were trying to reboot Archie because I think it was declining. Because even the comics had a big reboot where they turned him into like a rock star and like they did a whole reworking. Again, they've done a lot of different Archie stuff. Yeah, but they, they did a full reboot rebranding, which they hadn't done before. Most Archie comics have been pretty continual in their storyline. This was a full reboot because I think they were trying to capitalize on new sales. They were trying to capitalize on the Riverdale show. Yeah. But the people who watched the show weren't the comic book readers, right? And the people who would read comic books, well, they're not reading Archie, right? They're reading Marvel and DC. That being said, absolutely, I think he's in a discussion for greatest comic book character outside of Marvel and DC. Yeah. Been around for ages. Significant, iconic. Everyone knows him. Successful. He, he makes the top five, I would say. Probably, yeah. I would absolutely say. My first pick that I want to discuss, which you did mention already, is Hellboy. I, I figured you love Hellboy so much. I was like, there's no way you're not going to bring up Hellboy. No, and and but like Dark Horse is probably the fourth biggest comic book company. Yeah, maybe. It would go Marvel and DC at one and two, Image at three. But Image is a different kind of unique thing because, again, it's indie publishing. Dark Horse is a, well, Dark Horse used to have Star Wars and then Marvel bought that out. Well, Disney bought out Star Wars and then bought out Marvel. Yeah, but but Dark Horse used to release the Star Wars stuff. Obviously, the biggest one from Dark Horse is, of course, Hellboy. Well, and they have the Buffy stuff, too. Yep. That's pretty significant. Yeah, and BPRD is a spinoff book that they've done from Hellboy. But either way, Hellboy has been around for a long time. Created by Mike Pignola. Has two very good, well-received films. Has one not-so-well-received film. And has two very good animated films that are fantastic. And I've never seen those still, so... Oh, you haven't? I have them. Yeah, I've just never watched them. They're fantastic. They're really good. But... He's a great character. There's tons of good symbolism behind him. He's very unique. The lore is fantastic. I think at this point, everyone knows Hellboy enough. Because of the movies, yeah. He's pretty recognizable. I think he's very unique to a lot of other comic book characters. Like, he he's he's familiar. Like, he, he hits all the same notes as a Spider-Man or a Batman or a Superman for, per, per se. But he's different enough and his world is different enough that it feels fresh yeah like they deal with a lot of fiction but they deal with a lot of folklore and mythology based fiction so they have records and like so much to draw from from like real life stories and myth and it's refreshing and it's neat to kind of delve into all that lore and you get to learn a lot about other things because mm -hmm. like credit to the writing crew behind it it's it's accurate in their depictions even though if they switch it a little bit they tried to go very dark accuracy so fairies are brother grim fairies for example yeah. which are terrifying little critters yeah and i think he's a great character obviously i'm a big fan of him ron perlman is fantastic in the role uh, i can't remember who played him in the other movies but um uh, david harbour david harbour i think he's a great casting for it 
He is. He was a very good cast. It just wasn't a good movie. No, it, it missed out on what made the Guillermo del Toro one so great. And this is 100% credit to Guillermo del Toro and his makeup st- staff. Yeah. Because they did some things in that film that was really, really, really impressive and good for them. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. What are your thoughts on putting Hellboy up? I mean, yeah, he's worth discussing. I would, yeah. He's, if we're talking top five, he's probably in there. Yep. I think he's, he's been in video games. He has a video game coming out too, actually. Oh, does he? Yeah. It was announced a little bit while ago, but he's been a guest character in Mortal Kombat, I think, right? Or a fight, a fighting game. It wasn't Mortal Kombat. It was the DC. Wow. I can't remember what it's called. Injustice. Yeah, he. I believe he's a guest character in Injustice 2, or he's a guest character in Mortal Kombat 11, but I don't think so. I think it's in Injustice 2. It could be. But either way, he's he's big enough to be in them. Yeah. And I think that's significant, and I do think he's worth discussing. Now, did you have a second one? I mean, I have a few other people I think worth talking about. I mean... I think if we give three each, I think that's fair, and then we're, we're going to miss some. Like, I'm, I'm not expecting us to nail all the top ones off the top of the head, but we're, we're going to miss mean, some. I mean, I don't know much about him, but Spawn would have to be... Spawn is huge. Yeah. I mean, it's what, 300 issues or something is comic? Yeah. Spawn is significant because... The biggest image book, I would say. It's what started Image. I know, but I'm just saying it's the most successful, I would say, from Image. At least consistently. Walking Dead. Well, because I was going to say that was where I was going to go, aside from Spawn. Walking Dead, I believe, is the most purchased Image comic book. Maybe. In, like, not including inflation. Like, obviously, because Spawn has hit over 300 issues, it's going to have more overall issues sold. But I think, like, per issue sales sort of thing, Walking Dead was selling more individual issues oh, yeah. per monthly basis. Not just because of the show, but the show definitely helped. It Like, it was successful before, but the show made it explode. But yeah, either way, Spawn is definitely a significant one worth discussing right he's had several video games he's had a movie he's had an hbo animated series that lasted two seasons yeah again i know very little i've never read a spawn book never seen any of the movies or shows or anything you know you have no idea of spawn lore not really i mostly i know him from i had an action figure of spawn when i was a kid oh yeah but yeah, like I, I tangentially know a bit about him. Like he's from, he, he was like a human who died or something and went to hell and then he fights demons, right? No. Well, kind of. So what it is, is as a CIA agent, I can't remember his name for the life of me right now. He is, he's killed on a job. Turns out he was betrayed by one of his fellow CIA agents. There's a big thing. Either way, he dies and he gets sent to hell. And then he turns into Spawn, which is like, it's a short for Hell Spawn. Yeah. And he's supposed to be the general that leads Hell's army in the war to take over Earth in the war against heaven and hell. And in order to do that, certain criteria have to be met. So they send him back after he agrees to take on this role so that he can get sent back to Earth so that he can see his family again and he can avenge all that. So he does it out of selfish desires, but yeah. that's what Malbolgia and all them want. That's why they kind of go after him so he goes back to earth and essentially what happens is he has so much magic power that when that runs out it triggers everything and he starts the war that he's supposed to lead helen and then so he just goes about his stuff he ends up living in an alley with hobos as like their guardian it starts early off as a lot of like mercenaries and crime stuff that he like essentially murders criminals who step into do chains stuff. and the cape and yeah while he's trying to you know watch over his family and he's trying to get revenge for himself which yeah. he ends up doing and then it's the hell spawn is supposed to then give birth to the leader of the army like it it gets more and more convoluted but he he turns into the guy who betrayed him who was actually had moved in to be stealing spawn's wife and then he so he used magic to look like him to sleep with his wife one last time okay but then she gets pregnant which is all part of hell's plan because their kid is gonna be the deciding factor between the war then it turns out she has twins and one of them bad one of them's good and it all it's a lot of heaven and hell stuff and i think where they're at right now is he's essentially the god of all creation or something like sure Anyway, that's the abridged version, I guess, of Spawn lore. Yeah. That being said, the HBO animated series, I don't know if you've watched it or not. No. It's quite good. It's animated. It goes pretty dark. They have, uh, I can't remember his name for the life of me. The guy from, you know, Community Season 6. Yeah, it's uh, Keith David. Doesn't he also play him in the movie? I believe so. Either way, he voices him in the animated stuff. Quite good. Obviously, an iconic voice for him. Yeah. Video games are very prominent. He had a couple of classic beat-em-up ones. Yeah, he was in a fighting game recently, too, I think. Yeah, he's in Mortal Kombat. Okay. He is definitely one of the characters, a guest character in Mortal Kombat. He's been in Soul Calibur on the Xbox version. I think it was Soul Calibur 3. That was the one that got Link on GameCube, Heihachi on PlayStation, and Spawn on Xbox, I believe. But yeah, 300 issues is significant. 
Mm -hmm. essentially the founder of Image Comics because Image Comics was founded by Todd McFarlane. Uh, Rob Liefeld was another one. Yeah, I think Kirkman was too, wasn't he? I believe so. Yeah, I think there was a few of them. I think it was like pre predominantly the three of them who started their own stuff because they were tired of losing. Yeah, it's you lose the rights to the characters you make. Yeah. But I mean, I've, I've heard... Todd McFarland has basically turned into what he hated. <laughs> yes. Well, because he's trying to make more money. Yeah. But he's trying to make it that image gets more and more. I know powerful. that was a big thing with the, the Angela stuff. Yeah. Because somebody wrote Angela into a Spawn comic as a guest writer. Yeah. But then because it was written in Spawn, which is his property, he tried to take it. And then there's lawsuits that happen. And then Angela ended up being that writer's property. So he brought it to Marvel. Yeah. He sold her to Marvel. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. I think he did it just. It was out of spite, I'm pretty sure, well, yeah. I mean, I don't, he wasn't going to write a solo Angela comic by himself with, like, making up his own thing. So he was like, I'll do this out of spite. I'll make some money off of it. And I'm done with this property anyway, sort of thing. So I agree. I agree Spawn is probably worth discussing. Uh, my second pick then, and this is kind of unfair, but I think it's fair, is going to be the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I was thinking about them too, yeah. I think they count as one character. I mean, they don't, but in this discussion, just for saying, like, most popular characters outside of... Marvel and DC. That's what I mean. I think the four of them count as one. Yeah. Like, and I think, like, they are massive. Oh, yeah, for sure. Definitely. Cartoons, toys, movies, everything. Like, they had their own rock concert that toured North America. Yeah. And it was massive. They were a sensation. There's more... Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle ripoffs and there are Pokemon ripoffs. Yeah, probably. And spinoffs and whatnot. And it's, there's a lot. The one thing I'll say against the Turtles is, is it fair to call them comic book characters just because they originated in comics? Yeah, it's interesting because they're massively popular and successful characters, but it's like the comics are probably one of the areas they're least successful in. Not that it's not successful. Like they have good running comics, but like the, between the movies and the game and the toys and the cartoons and stuff, I feel like we're more successful. Yeah. Yeah, like I feel like they've surpassed and outgrown a comic book character. They're now just a multifaceted franchise almost. Yeah, I would argue there's a lot of people out there that don't know their comic book characters. Yeah, like you, most people wouldn't guess who invented them. Yeah. It's Eastman and Laird, if you're curious, but it's, it's one of those things where like the one reason, because they could have been talked about as a greatest of all time in general, but like, are they just, are they no longer considered comic book I mean, characters? it's the same thing as like, you don't really think of Pokemon as a video game necessarily, like as a franchise, like that's not your, you don't think of them as the greatest video game characters, right? Even though that's where they originated. Yeah. But that's the thing. Like Spawn is clearly a comic book. Hellboy is clearly a comic book. Archie's clearly a comic book. Turtles, I don't know. I mean, they've had very successful comics, but yeah, like I would agree. It's their, their cartoons and movies have probably been the greatest successes. Yeah. They're almost more successful not doing Like there is a new turtle show every three or four years. Well, I mean, they're about to have their eighth movie come out. Yeah. Like they are so significant outside of comics that like, even though their comics are still really good like they're well written they're good comics i have the first two omnibuses of the original run they're they're quality i mean the new run is supposed to be really good too like it's 150 issues in or something and like they not that long ago had the last ronin which people really love yeah. and i mean that's getting adapted into a video game now yep like they're they're good comics but i'm just it's almost to the point like do the count i get what you're saying as comic book characters yeah. or are they something so much larger than comic book mm -hmm. characters now. And I, I don't think that's a discussion we can answer. Yeah. I think that's going to be up to listeners and just un, like individual thought. But when it comes to like financial success, I do think they've dominated that round. Yeah. I think they're the most successfully financial oh, yeah. comic book franchise ever. I mean, Archie. maybe not now after Marvel because of the MCU. The toy sales in the 80s and 90s were... I know it was huge, but I'm just saying the movies from Marvel make so much money and they make so many of them and now they make like toys and video games and all that stuff too yeah but the turtles are are fantastic like that would be that's my one and two right now yeah there's others to be discussed i don't know if you have a third um well i was thinking like you mentioned the walking dead i would probably i was gonna say someone from there i was probably go with rick but it's hard to say because it's like that's almost more successful as a franchise than individual characters that that's the thing like i don't think rick is what makes those good no i agree so the other one i was thinking would be invincible and that's newer so it's harder to say what his like overall staying power will be yeah but as of right now like his comic was extremely successful and now they've started the show so it's you know we got to see where it goes but as of right now he's 
very, very high up, I would say. Yeah, like obviously Kirkman's an incredible writer. So when it comes to like all the story and all those elements, like he checks those boxes quite well. Of course, he's nowhere near as iconic as we would want at this point. But like you're saying, he's much newer in the grand scheme of things. Maybe if the show does extremely well and we get seven seasons of it, it could end up turning him into something extremely iconic. Yeah. For example, um, the boys, no one knew any, no one knew the boys until the show. It's the biggest thing. It's one of the biggest shows ever. Like people love the TV show. No one, no one's read the comics. You've read the comics. I know that, but like, that's the thing. No one had heard of them. I mean, I didn't read it until the show came out either. So exactly. But it's such a good show that it's earned popularity. It's the same thing with Invincible. Like maybe yeah, it might. the show picks up popularity and it changes the way we view the comic. I will say though, that comic had several spinoffs. It got its own universe. Yes. I will say the comic being done is going to hurt it. That's, yeah, that's the one thing. It's like if he ever comes back in any way. Uh, yeah. Or even his universe. Like, they could. Like, they wrapped it up. but like, They did, yeah. But there's lots of ways they could still tell stories in that universe. Easily. Easily. They Like, their wrap-up was like a short thing of like, this is what happens in the next 200 years of their existence. Exactly. Just, so they could fill that in all the, like easily. They could also just do something in the future. Mm -hmm. Easily. Like, they could expand it. I do think he's a great character. It's an interesting take on the teenage superhero which I do like. Yeah. Normally we get the teenage superhero, which is like, it's pretty lighthearted with some darker tones. Whereas I would say the opposite of Invincible, where it's very dark with a few lighthearted tones and it hits the reality of what being an actual teen superhero would be. And like yeah. you're faced with a lot of death in those universes really quickly. Like sure, Peter might have lost Gwen Stacy, but like half of Mark's class gets exploded by a serial killer. It's like, that's significant. He watches all, most of his friends die. <laughs> like, yeah, throw it at some point. Yeah. Yeah. Like he's just, it's, and it's kind of accurate. Yeah. And I think he's fair to be discussed by all means. I think, I think he's too new to put on Rushmore personally for me though. Yeah, it's fair. I don't know if you would have more arguments to put him on Rushmore. I mean, like I said, it's, he's, he's very on the rise, so it's hard to say too much it's like it needs a little more time it's tough to say he's on the rise when his comic is done yeah but i think the show upped his popularity quite a bit too i mean anytime there's a show or movie it's gonna up popularities of characters it's gonna make their there be like a new surge of people reading the comics for sure but the problem with his show is it's animated yeah which means it's like one season every three or four years or however long it's been like it's been how long since the last season came out? I mean, we still haven't heard anything about season two. I know it's been clear that they're going to get a second season, but animation takes a long time. I mean, sometimes. There's lots of animated shows that put out seasons every year, too. That's true. But this one doesn't seem like it's coming out anytime soon. Despite it, I think doing okay. I think it did pretty good. I thought the show was fine. I didn't think it was amazing. I think a lot of people really liked it. So Yeah, I'm not. it's not bad by any means. I didn't think it was amazing, but I thought it was fine. I think we're kind of hitting the point where it's like who else can compete with those top yeah. four that we mentioned yeah like i'm trying to rack my brain for a third because spawn was going to be the third one i was going to bring up and i'm really struggling to find somebody that's going to hold enough of a candle yeah it's hard especially for characters that are like specifically from comics like, yeah, like there's lots are. of comics based on existing properties yeah and there are some great comics that we could bring up obviously yeah just not as popular well you can say like why the last man is fantastic but is york a great character like no it's not yeah. york that makes that comic book it's just the written aspect of that comic book yeah uh there was one that i just thought of to be honest and i can't remember it it came and went but oh that's right would maybe somebody like dr manhattan but see my thought with that is that's vertigo which is dc Oh, true. True. I wasn't considering that. It is Vertigo. Otherwise, I could say someone from Watchmen or maybe Sandman. Sandman would be a, a, a worthwhile look for sure. But I was thinking of them as DC. True. True, true, true. I was thinking of Vertigo as separate, but you're right. It's DC's branch of indie comics. Yeah. But yeah, I, I don't know. I think that might be just... It's a quick discussion, but of those five characters then that we mentioned, I mean, the top four is probably the four that aren't invincible. Yeah for sure is there anybody else like i'm trying to think like the problem is there's a ton of smaller comic book companies oh yeah there's lots of books i like more than the stuff we talked about yeah like there's a lot of these smaller companies that they're smaller for a reason like again dynamite is best known for the boys yeah and as a comic book it didn't do very well as a show it's done fantastic i mean they've written it better than the comic yeah for sure it's way better valiant is another smaller comic book company which they put out some stuff but obviously nothing massive nothing's picked up yeah. I mean, I don't know any of the characters from it. I haven't read it, but Saga's really big right now. Saga's good. I don't think it's long enough 
to hold a candle to this. And I think it's still too like new and unique. I mean, it's, it's Brian K. Vaughn. So of course it's extremely well written, but is it, is it enough to hold a candle to again, Invincible, which has however many issues been out for a while, has a TV show yep. where a saga, it's what, like 50 issues or something. I know no, it's at like 80 or something. Is it 80 now? Cause I know he took a big break. Yeah. He did like 65 or 70 or something, took a break. He's back at it now and he's going to do that number again. It's going to like, he has a plan for when it's going to end. Yeah. Like I know he's, he's writing it when he wants to, like he's not rushing it, which is a well, fair idea. He just took a break and now he's back at it. It's not going to be like he's going to release of an issue and then two months later an issue and then wait four months in an issue it's more he's like he wanted to wait till he could commit to doing a big chunk of it at least yeah i'll do i'll do 10 arcs and then i'll take a break for a couple years and i'll do 10 more arcs sort of thing like i've read the i have the first two trades and i've read the first two trades and they are very good i yeah i just i don't think there's enough of them there's a bunch of comics that last a lot like i read the hack and slash series yeah and cassie hack is is fine she's just kind of a meaner buffy the vampire slayer it's the same idea but the fact that i'm bringing up hack and slash and i guarantee maybe four people ever listening to this will know who hack and slash is because it's not prolific yeah potentially i mean i guess maybe the mask Eh, i I, I, more famous for the film way more famous for the film than anything else there's the tick yeah, I don't think he... Couple couple live action shows. Yeah, but I still don't think he measures up to the other ones. Very successful animated television show. That was big. It was huge when that one came out. Got like three seasons. Uh, video games, long running comic book series. It's a, it's a spoof of comic books and it's the most successful spoof of comic books for sure. Well, I mean, that depends on what you consider a spoof of comic books, but... Because, I mean, like, The Boys is that, too. Ah, uh, kind of, yeah. It is. It's just a very dark and violent spoof. I guess The Tick is a spoof on 80s comics, and The Boys is a bit more of a realistic take on the problems of modern-day comics. Yeah. So if we limit it to those four, then. Let's just take the four. Let's get Invincible out of fix. I don't think he holds a candle. If we're looking at Hellboy, Spawn, Archie, and the Turtles, who would you put as number one between them? I would... Again, if we're going for comics, probably either Spawn or Archie. Like, overall, the Turtles, yeah. Yeah, it's an overall franchise, the Turtles, for sure. But if we're looking at comic book characters, I don't think there's significant enough in comic books. I know that's nitpicking, that it's hard to say because... yeah. Their success in comics is what created this yeah. massive enterprise of whatever they are. I mean, to an extent, but I feel like at the same time, if it had just been made as a cartoon, it would have been fine. Like, it didn't need the comic first. Well, yeah, because the first cartoon is extremely different from the well, original yeah. comic anyway. It's really just based off the idea of Teenage Ninja Turtles. Yeah, because the original comic was a Daredevil spinoff. They just made a jokey Daredevil thing. That's why the foot are called the foot, because referencing the hand. Yeah. Right? Like, that's all that is. So they've got most of their success from that 80s show. Yeah. And then all of the subsequent TV shows, except for the TMNT run, because that one is actually comic book accurate, but it's a little bit more edgy and cool and aimed at an older audience sort of thing. I mean, their comics have also toned down significantly from their early ones. Not really. I mean, I've read a few and it's it's a lot toned down from those original like R-rated ones. I mean, did you read the one where Donatello gets his shell cracked in half and I've heard of dies? It, yeah. Because I've read that one. No, I've heard of that one. You seen the one where they kill Shredder? No, I, I know they do still like they do dark stuff, but I feel like it's significantly less than it used to be. I don't think they're mature rated anymore. I don't think the original ones were. I I'm, I thought they were. I thought the first runs were. Well, the very first issue they kill Shredder, and again it was just a joke issue. But since that, they weren't that bad. Like they have like a Christmas episode where Mikey's trying to get a specific toy. They have Raph and Casey Jones and all that stuff. Like, but it's not. It's not rated R stuff. It's not like they're lopping off heads. I don't know. I thought the first ones were... Well, no. Once they saw they had commercial success, they kind of shifted to make sure they maintained it while staying within the grounds. But yeah, it's a Daredevil ripoff. And then obviously the 80s cartoon is is where all the success happened. That's what kickstarted this whole thing. So then Spawn or Archie then, if we're looking at actual combo characters, that's a weird discussion because they're so... They're very different. (laughs) They're so opposed to each other, right? Yeah. Like Archie's slice of life realism and spawn is not at all i don't know like (sighs) archie hits it it dominates a market that no other comic really steps into yeah that's true it 100 percent dominates like that slice of life market yeah the only ones like there are other comics that try to follow suit with that but they couldn't i'm sure there's other ones that do it well it'd be like it's a lot of the sunday paper comics like dunesbury is a comic book yeah and yeah, they show up in the Sunday paper, but it is a comic with a long running story that advances throughout time. They just have clips in the comics, but you can just buy volumes of that. Archie, I, it's just way bigger than all of them. I mean, if we're going into comic strips, though, too, you could also maybe say Garfield. Garfield is significant. I don't think he's big enough. Probably not. Because, again, he hits the same ground as Archie. Yeah. And then I don't think anybody else compares to Archie in that sense. Whereas Spawn is 
the king of indie comics and that's worth noting yeah but again if you look at him as i mean i would i would consider his book a superhero book the same way ghost rider is a superhero book spawns a superhero it's book. along the lines for sure like and it's within that genre he's not the dominant one but if it look if you're looking at like significance like the importance of that character outside of things like spawn is what created indie comics oh sorry it's what took indie comics back and made them relevant again. If Spawn doesn't exist, we don't get Image Comics. We don't get The Walking Dead. We don't get Invincible. We don't get the other handfuls of awesome, incredible image works or indie works that we we have, right? Maybe. I mean, you might have just gotten a lot of those at other companies. Maybe, maybe not. I'm, that's what I'm saying. It's That's hard to say, though, because like indie comics did always exist. It wasn't the first indie comics company. No, but they didn't exist to the same extent. I know it's different. And because other how the way other companies worked is, again, we might not get these writers willing to give those characters up because that's the scary part about doing that is any character you make for marvel doesn't belong to you yeah even if you make the greatest character that's great you get zero money on that because that intellectual property doesn't belong to you it belongs to marvel yep so spawn being successful create enough money for image to stay afloat to then branch off to give writers the chance to have their own individual properties that there are so many that people have never heard of there's so many that i've never read that you've never read oh yeah that are extremely well liked and extremely loved and it's a medium and an industry that's created because of spawn right like image is the third biggest comic book company and it's create and it's it's writer own works and that all works because of spawn his importance what importance has archie brought to the comic book world what has he done to shake things up? I mean, he's never shaken things up, I think is the big thing. Like, I mean, they've had controversies in their book, but it's, again, he's been around since the 60s and been very successful and pr is pretty much the only comic anyone knows of that genre. For sure. But it's his, if his best accomplishment is consistency, is that... I mean, that's hard to do. It is hard to do. Like 60 years of consistency is not an easy thing to do, it especially be, outside of Marvel and DC. It might be more than 60 years. I don't know if he started in the 60s. He might have started in the 50s or the 40s. I don't know. I don't, know. I don't think that old, but... It's possible. I, I can't tell you for certain. Yeah. Consistency is big for sure, but... But I mean, outside of Marvel and DC, there's like how many books have gone that long? Probably none, to be honest. Like, I don't know for sure, but not a lot. I I can't think of any... Yeah, I can't think of anything the, else. The fact that Spawn got 300 issues is a really big deal. Yeah. But Spawn started in the 90s, right? I think so, yeah. Well, because 12 issues a year. Well, I mean, it, that's not always 100% consistent sometimes. Well, let's, let's say it is, which I believe it was for Spawn. That's 112 a decade, which means it's been on for roughly 30 years now, which puts it to about the 90s. Yeah. Early 90s, which I think it was around that time anyway. But it's just, it's, if consistency is the thing, I don't know. It's hard to say. They're so completely opposed. I mean, yeah. Oh, Archie Comics started in 1939. 84 years. Oh, that helps it a lot. 1939? Yeah. That predates a lot of the big DC characters. It, yeah, and the Marvel ones even more so. Like, that's Archie started roughly the same time as Batman and Superman and all that. Yeah. So, oh, ooh, that might do it. <laughs> he's, yeah, he's past 80 years. Yeah, that might do it. That's a significant enough consistency that he's still a household name. 84 years ago. Everyone still knows Archie, and they're still making new Archie stuff that is finding success. Granted, Riverdale, extremely different from yeah, Archie. But it's still running, so I mean, people must be watching it. Whether or not, like, it's it's not Archie. It's just... It's based on it, yeah, but... It's not even based on it. It's literally, like, let's just take names. The character from. names and vague appearances. Yeah, that's it, though. And then we'll just slap them in this world world and it will work but it's close enough to be like i it guess it counts yeah but 80 years for archie like that's that's significant yeah when it was 60 years it's like eh, whatever but 80 years is hard to argue now yeah i think that's for me i think that's gonna push it i think i'm glad you looked that up yeah because that absolutely changes everything i think that does establish archie as the greatest non-marvel dc comic book character and ooh, that might does I that, don't think he would unseat any of the other ones that we talked about. His longevity is the same as Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman. I mean, exactly. They all already match up to that. And Spider Man is so much more. But he's way bigger. Yeah, iconic and important. He's probably number five though, based on that longevity. I maybe. But like that's an, that's a long time. I didn't think it was that long, but that's huge. And he's been running for that long, even when that type of comic, like a slice of life comic Archie existed during World War Two. Yep. But that comic comics in general don't do well 
Yeah. And we know that Marvel and DC have been the dominant forces in comics for however many years now. So just that Archie is still ticking Mm -hmm. despite that for that long. It hasn't died off. Yeah. That's significant. Coming up on 100 years. Like that's... That's impressive. Yeah. That's good for them. That's really impressive for Archie to be around for that long. Yeah. I would have to agree. I think that puts him at number one. Character I wasn't even thinking of when we first started this recording. No, I'm glad. Like, whew. We almost dropped the ball heavy. Yeah. And I'm sure someone in the comics is going to say, you missed this character and this character. Even still, I'm sure lots of people would go nuts that we picked Archie just because he's so overlooked. I think by a lot of like regular comic readers. They won't consider him to be the same thing, right? Like they'll say like, oh, Archie is, is he's barely a comic book character, right? But it's like he, he is. He's just, he's not the mainstream comic books in the sense that he's not an action comic book character. Yeah. He's a slice of life comic book character. And slice of life is not massive for reading in North America, but it's definitely a genre of reading that's massive in other parts of the world. I mean, Archie's really popular in North America. Archie is the is the one standout for North America. But like there's a whole like slice of life for anime and manga is yeah. massive. For Western, it's it's pretty much just Archie. If you either you read superhero comics, you read indie comics. Yeah. Or at this point, I guess you read Archie comics. Yeah. And that's about it. And those are the three types of of comic book reader and superheroes are obviously the most saturated yeah. area indie comics are becoming bigger because there's better writers using it for different reasons one it's either a platform to get hired to marvel or dc or two it's a platform for successful marvel and dc writers to bring their fan base into their own individual pockets to make their own money off them yeah and then there's archie which is just doing its thing for almost 100 years now 80 plus years of archie comics well no not 80 plus almost well 84 84 you're right of archie comics that's a stat good for good for them well like we said mention down in the comments below who you think the greatest non-marvel or dc comic book character is do you agree with all of our points that it probably has to be archie or is there somebody we completely overlooked or somebody that we discussed that you think is worthwhile let us know down in the comments below we'd absolutely appreciate that if you enjoyed this video feel free to give us a like or subscribe to the channel it would really help we're trying to build it even more and more and we're getting more and more subscribers which is fantastic and we like to appreciate everybody who's been a long time listener or a new listener yep thank you so much for all the all the help you've been doing helping us grow this channel as best we can with that we are going to be stepping away from the bi-weekly podcast for a little bit we're going to turn it into a seasonal format the reason for that is i'm trying my best to not make this podcast topical i don't want it to be just alex and i discussing the newest thing that's popped up in nerd culture like oh let's talk about the playstation showcase or oh, let's talk about this i want it to be something that's very thematic in the way nerd culture works in the way things that are significant in nerd culture works but that takes time to actually formulate these good topics while that i think are, are good debatable topics recently we've had a few but it's turning into just discussions of the greatest because we're kind of running out of ideas at this point and i want to take a little bit of a break to maybe hopefully formulate some better more discussable more approachable more interesting topics to discuss so in order to do that we're going to have one more podcast coming out two weeks from now that's going to be the end of this first season of podcasts which granted it's been like two years worth of them yep so done pretty good with that we're going to take a break for a couple months we'll see and then we'll come back for another sort of mini season we're probably going to turn into like mini seasons of five or six podcasts trying to hit actually good interesting topics that are more so than just who's the best at this what's the best at this why is this the best yeah and let's look into a little bit more things a little bit more in depth a little bit more i won't say sophisticated but unique in the discussion yeah so hopefully you've enjoyed this so far i just want to give you the heads up we're gonna have one more episode this season and then and Wednesday content is going to be something completely new moving forward from there. Yep. So, yep. Thank you all for listening and enjoy the rest of your day. Bye.